What is up guys, Cobra 29 is back with a brand new video. In today's video we're doing part, oh gosh, 12? Something like that to our beginner scripting series. In today's video we're going to be ta uh, taking a look at remote events. These are very helpful in scripting um, because, well, we'll get into that soon. I first want to say I'm sorry, my microphone is uh, kind of broken right now. I hope to have that fixed for the next video, so I'm using a built-in microphone, which means my typing will likely be very loud. I really apologize for that. But without further ado, let's get into remote events. So what are remote events? And uh, before we do that really quickly, I just want to say, um, don't worry about it if you're not understanding this because this is this is a more advanced topic. I'm just putting it inside of the beginner scripting series because I wish I would have known this. Um, I think it can help you guys. Even if you don't fully understand it, that's okay. It can really help you guys with your scripting. Um, so what are re remote events? Remote events are basically ways for us to um, have a user click a button, so have something run on the client that then runs on the server. We talked about clients and servers last episode. If you didn't watch that one, make sure to go watch that video. Um, so basically, a player can push a button and it can happen on the server so everybody sees what they just did. So remote events are helpful when making stuff like a shop or anything like that, like a GUI, any GUI where you want something to actually happen that everybody else sees, okay, not just the one player. Okay, uh, so let's just dive right into this. Um, how do we make these remote events? So it's really simple. It's an object that you put into your game. And I always place my re remote events in replicated storage, okay? So come over to replicated storage and click the plus icon and cl uh, do remote event. We're not going to do remote functions, just remote events. Remote functions aren't going to be in our beginner scripting series, okay? So we can rename this remote event to something like... Um, spawn part okay so this is for us to be able to name it something so we are organized right and what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna have um, a part spawn every single time somebody a player clicks this button okay so let's insert a new screen GUI into starter GUI and let's just call this um, spawn GUI and then let's just insert a text button right into there Okay, we can drag it on over here, let's drag it right there, kind of close that, or I mean, make it a little smaller, and we can hit text, scaled, right here, and type in, um, spawn a part, okay? So, you may be thinking, let's enter the local script, perfect, we're going to enter the local script, but things are going to be a little bit different. Let's just experiment first though. We can say script.parent dot mouse button one click. Okay, so when a player clicks the button, colon connect oh, function. So we're gonna do this whenever the button is clicked. And we can just say local part equals instance dot new part. And right we can change its properties by saying part dot blank, but we're just gonna put it inside of the workspace by saying part dot parent equals game dot workspace. So now let's go ahead and play our game, and you will see a part spawning in every single time we click the button. So as you can see, we can click the spawn part button, and there's a new part in the game, right? And it's right here, right? We can spawn a new one. They're all here, they're just kind of getting a little bit messy, but as you can see, they are here, alright? Right? You guys can all see this. They're all right here, right? And they, they show up, but look at this. Let's go into the server. There's nothing by our player. Where we are seeing all of these parts, nobody else sees them. So maybe we want every player to see them. That's what we're going to do with remote events. So what we can do is we can just take this code where we made a new part and let's copy it and then delete it because we're going to use it later. And we can say game.replicated storage. Okay, so we're going inside of the replicated storage. Dot spawn part. So spawn part is inside of replicated storage it's a child of replicated storage and we can say colon fire server so fire server uh, means that we're going to do something from the client right here to the server okay um, I hope that makes sense so we can uh, insert a script into server script service and let's just name this script remote handling you can name it whatever you want I'm just gonna name it remote handling and in here we can say game dot replicated storage. Okay, we're gonna find the same remote event dot spawn part. And then here's a new um so sorry, I didn't explain that well. 
fire server is what it's like saying colon connect function you are connecting a function so you're firing something you're gonna make something happen when you write this out that can be picked up from a regular script and we can say dot spawn part dot on server event so this is how we pick it up on the server to do something colon connect function so this is how you write it out okay this is how you write it out when um when you're picking up a fired event so when they've they've fired it from a local script and then you want to pick it up on a regular script so everybody in the game you can paste that now everybody in the game can see it because we went from a local script we fired it to the remote event and picked it up on a regular script and a regular script runs on the server that means that everybody in the game can see it um but now if we click spawn apart we're still spawning apart right we can spawn tons and tons and tons of parts and it's pretty much we may think that it's doing the exact same thing but if we now check on the server now they're all here okay so that is firing remote events um, and this can be so helpful because we can make shops with this so let me show you how we can make a quick shop um, here because these are where is it these are cool right but they're not that awesome right they're just little blocks um, sorry this this is a shop sort of a thing but it's not very cool so let's um, go ahead and come into starter GUI and where we have our shop frame let's scroll down and make sure visible is checked so we have our little shop okay inside of the shop frame let's go ahead and insert a text button and let's go ahead and drag it down and then let's see uh, something like that's fine there we go. So we have this little button right here. Let's make sure the text is scaled. And let's change the text to something like, uh, oh, uh, it doesn't matter, but whatever you want them to be able to buy. I'm just going to let them buy a, uh, a jump coil, okay? Buy jump coil for 50 coins, okay? And we want them to be able to click it and it gives them a jump coil. So let's go ahead and make this shop frame invisible again by clicking visible and make sure, making sure it's unchecked. And let's go ahead and search up a, uh, a jump coil. All right, here's a warning. Do not do that. <laughs> don't find that jump coil because I realized afterward uh, that this does have a hack script. So don't uh, do this one. Um, watch all the way to the end, please, because I realized uh, that the other coil we used also has one. So we, I'm showing you how to fix that at the end. Um, but just search up how to make your own. Don't use models with scripts. Just don't. Find, find a video on how to make a jump coil. Use that, name it, and put it in server storage. And let's go ahead and drag it into server storage. So this is our gravity coil. Now we want to check in. Uh, we want to check to see if they have enough. So here, here we are. Right. Let me let me make the shop frame visible again. All right. And then let's find our text button right here, and let's give it a name like uh, jump coil. I'm just calling it jump coil, even though it's technically a gravity coil. Okay. We have that, and let's enter the local script in here. So. Something we could do is we could say like script.parent.mouse button one click, and we're gonna go ahead and do that anyway. Script.parent.mouse button one click colon connect function like this, but we could just say if player.coins and stuff like that, right? We can check to see if they have enough coins, but we don't want to do that on the client. We want to do that on the server because the thing is when they when hackers run c code <laughs> when hackers run code, they could change the amount of um, coins they have on the server but not on the client. I mean, sorry, other way around. They can change the amount of coins they have on the client but not on the server, okay? So we want to um, check on the server it's just a way to make sure that nobody's hacked it so we can say local player equals game dot players dot local player right we've already I think we've talked about that when it's a local script you can write that and that is the player and then let's insert a new re uh, remote event into replicated storage and let's just call this by coil and we can just say game dot replicated storage dot by coil colon fire server and ready for this? Remember in um, 
in our functions episode. Oh, why am I blanking out? We can pass through parameters. There it is. We can pass through parameters with remote events from the client to the server. So let's just pass through player. So we are passing through the player that clicked that. So this is a parameter, right? We're firing that server, and we're going to pick it up on a script, but we're also going to know what the player is because that's a parameter we're passing through, all right? And we're going to pass through the player. Make sure it's the same exact thing right here and here because it's a variable, all right? So let's go into our remote handling script, and let's just create a new function. We can say event colon connect function like that and here we can just say um, if and then we also want a parameter here we can say call it PLR P player uh, P L A Y E it doesn't matter what we call it is what I'm trying to show you but it does on this it has to be um, when we're passing it through it has to be the same spelling but let's just keep it simple and write player and we can say if player dot leader stats dot coins dot value is greater than or equal greater than or equal to 50 then because that's how much we put the amount to so they have to have at least 50 coins then we can give them their coil we can say uh, player dot leader stats dot coins uh, dot value equals and then let's copy this so we're gonna give them the same amount of coins they have minus 50 so we're gonna take away 50 other coins and we're just gonna say play uh, let's just clone our coil right here and we can say local speed coil equals game dot server storage dot speed coil colon clone so we've cloned that and we can say speed coil dot parent equals player dot backpack and that will put it inside of the players backpack and that's literally all we need to do. So those are remote events, and we can fire them. So now, not only if the player buys the jump coil, right, um, not only they will see it, but everybody in the game will see that they bought the jump coil. So it's super helpful with something like that. There is one other thing you can do with remote events, and that's... Um, firing clients but we're not going to get into that because that's a little too advanced i just wanted to show you th this because it's going to help you if you like to make shops like i did when i started roblox um, scripting shops were like such a cool thing to make um you're going to want to know how to do remote events right um so let me just show you real quick currently we don't have enough coins and it's going to show that we don't by not giving us the coil um and you could set up a remote event to say that you don't have enough coins I'm not gonna do that though but I am gonna come into player leader stats on the client um, and and give them coins equal to a hundred I'm gonna give me so I'm gonna give me myself a hundred coins and now I have enough to buy the coil so let's buy the jump coil and as you can see we have this jump coil that doesn't work yay wonderful I'm not going to make you sit through me watching or trying to figure out where the hack is, but I'm just letting you know. This is where I figured out there's a hack in these coils. This is where I'm telling you, make your own coil, basically. Well, now I'm saying that. All right, I need to let you all know there is a hack in this, uh, in the speed coil. So I think this one looks fine. I mean, yeah, it says OMG hacks. Um, yeah, that's what we've been using. This speed coil, get rid of this fx script just search script in the explorer don't put that there like seriously they these it's so annoying there are so many hacks get rid of the scripts in your speed coil learn how to make one from search script delete all the scripts in the coils all of them from a youtube video S coils are very much um they very much um and contain hacks just learn how to make your own i mean there's their YouTube videos. Don't if there's don't take scripts from from free models because there were there were hacks in that one. So yeah, let's not let's not play with that. Um, yeah, so that even like force quit. Uh, it made my studio quit. So I'm gonna have to rescript what I just did. And um, yeah, just don't play around with these. Make your own coils. I mean, just look it up. It's pretty simple.
just look it up on YouTube, how to make a speed coil, how to make a jump coil, and put that in your server, uh, server storage and make sure that is what you're using um, when it comes to remote events. So, or anything else, um, just FYI, okay? Um, and yeah, so that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, yeah, so we have two more parts left after this one. Um, find for child and wait for child, as well as making a game with everything we've learned, including the remote events. Um, except you'll notice that I don't have the remote events here because it uh, it didn't save because of those uh, hacks. So yeah, please be careful with your models. Um, just don't use scripts from the toolbox, okay? Um, so yeah, don't use scripts. Learn how to make your own uh, from YouTube. Those are better. Don't use free models with scripts um, unless you really know what you're doing, right? So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe, please, and hit that notification bell, and leave a like on the video. And uh, yeah, make sure to join our group if you want to do that, and I will see you next time.